Hi, I'm Michelle. This is my Romantic Tangle, and I would like to know what is your best ever thrifting find? And how do you define what is a great thrifting find? Is that a good deal on something that you could have bought elsewhere brand new? Is it a vintage thing that you've never seen before in your life? but stumbled across and didn't know you wanted until you picked it up off the shelf. What is success for you? I have been thrifting for a long time, more than 40 years. And over the years, we found a lot of things that were memorable or that gave us good stories or that were very useful in the moment. But I decided to do a video inspired by what could be our best thrifting find ever, which we found and didn't realize was our best thrifting find ever until months later. But I want to share with you some of the exciting things I found over the years. And there have been dozens, if not hundreds, of things that were in that particular afternoon a great find that made us smile. These are the ones that had stood out. We'll start with the sewing machine. I found this sewing machine at the local St. Vinny's five years ago, something like that. And it was $15, and I liked it because it was blue, and I don't have a blue sewing machine. I have a lot of vintage sewing machines, but I don't have a blue one. Or I'd forgotten that my great-grandmother's sewing machine, which is up in my sewing room box step, because it needs repairs, is blue, but... At the time, I was pretty sure I didn't have a blue sewing machine. And I looked at it, drooled over it, walked away from it, and went home and thought about it and thought about it and decided that if it went half price, I would bring it home with me. And then I thought about it some more and dang, for 15 bucks, I should have bought that. Of course, since I am doing a video about my best thrifting finds, you know that I went back and I got it. For $7.50, I was able to plug it in in the store and make sure that it at least made noises like a sewing machine should make. And it is, I've only used it briefly because I use my workhorse machine most of the time, but that's a vintage working sewing machine for $7.50. And it's blue and it's adorable. Then there were the cross stitch kits. I went into St. Vinny's different St. Vinnie's with my daughter, and they had these. Actually, they had like twice as many as these. These are the ones I brought home. Somebody had done away with their collection, I guess, or purged, or I don't know what. But I got all these for about $2.25 each. I have since then stitched Little Girl with Cosmos, and I'm currently working on the Mad Bluebird, and I have plans at some point to stitch the others. I what it's not life changing, but I was so tickled on the afternoon that I found those. And I had my I keep a little bit of emergent not emergency money, but money in a pocket of my purse just in case there's that fabulous thing at the thrift store that doesn't cost that much money, but that I want to be able to buy without figuring it into the budget. A few weeks later, same thrift store, we found this. Again, that's not all of them. That is the ones I brought home. Those are vintage kits from the early 70s, most of them. And they were, again, $2 or so a kit. I'm trying to think back to what's in that picture. I'm not sure if I've stitched any of those yet, but I love collecting vintage kits. And finding a haul of them that inexpensive wasn't life-changing, but it definitely made me smile. We're kind of counting up from the least exciting to the most exciting here. Then there were the roller skates. My daughter and I were going up thrifting in Portland when she was a teen young teenager. She wanted, told me on the drive up, that she wanted to find a pair of old white leather roller skates with pink wheels. And as, of course, as a parent, you're thinking that there is no way we are going to find white roller skates with pink wheels in your size. First store of the day, she found them. The exact roller skates that she had in mind, 
in her size for $6.95. And as she was trying them on, a little old lady saw her and told her that that was such a good find and such a good price. That lady didn't know half the story. And speaking of shoes, there was years ago, probably 12 years ago, a local thrift store was going out of business and had all of their ladies' shoes for 25 cents a pair. Most of them were in my daughter's size. So I might have bought that girl 30 pairs of shoes that day. She brought them home, and over the course of weeks and months, she sorted through them, wore them, decided which ones pinched her toes and which ones she didn't particularly like, and they got filtered back as donations to other stores over a long stretch of time. But the shoes aren't nearly as much fun as the roller skates, but they were fun in the moment. And then my daughter at the Goodwill, I was talking to her about plans for this video, and she pointed out at the Goodwill bins a couple of months ago, she and her husband found refillable soda stream CO2 canisters for $2 each. They had just bought a soda stream, and I guess that those canisters retail for $30 each. So that was a something you were going to buy new and found a great deal on find. And now we're up to the two biggest finds. 20 years ago or so, my daughter told me in tears that she had left her baby doll at the craft store. But she'd done it weeks earlier and didn't know which craft store. My daughter didn't play with dolls. This was the one baby doll that was important in her life. And we had got it as part of a Christmas gift exchange, so I don't know who bought it. I don't know where they got it. I called every store that we go to that could be possibly described as the craft store and gave them descriptions of this doll. Finally, at I think it might have been Hancock's Fabric, the manager said that there had been a doll like that and she had taken it home for her daughter and she was going to bring it back. And I did try to talk her out of that because, you know, if her daughter had been playing with that doll for months, it's kind of hers fair and square at this point, but no, she wanted to bring it back. She brought it back, drove the hour up to the store because we live an hour away from town. It was, it matched the description of her doll perfectly. It wasn't our doll. I called every toy store in the area with a description of this doll because I don't know what brand this doll is. I know nothing except I am looking for a super realistic baby doll that doesn't have a stuffed body it, it was not good. I finally, through Google searches, found one on eBay that was just like ours. It was the same doll, except it was missing a foot. The foot you could see in the pictures, it was like a dog had chewed it off, and it was $20. And at that point in life, I couldn't justify spending $20 for a doll with a missing foot, because there's no way that doll was worth $20. And I don't know what the seller was thinking. Possibly they were thinking they were going to find the parent who was as desperate as I was. Absolute last resort, I called my grandma. And the reason that was a last resort was because if you asked grandma to find things like that, she, sometimes she'd come through, sometimes she would make a substitution. And in most circumstances, substitutions are fine, but this had to be the same baby doll. She went up to Portland. She found the baby doll. The only reason that I know that this is not our baby doll is because it still had the little hospital wristband, which ours no longer had. Otherwise, this could be the one my daughter lost. And I slipped up years late. She knew that her grandma found the doll at Goodwill up in Portland. I didn't realize she thought it was her doll, so I blew the illusion years later because we all have parenting fails. But this, I'm sorry, this baby doll is super creepy. I had rules against leaving this thing in the car because it is way too realistic. It is way too creepy. This is newborn because baby dolls in my house did not get named. We had newborn and we had a knockoff American Girls doll named Nee. K and E like the joint in your leg. So we found new grandma found newborn at the thrift store 
It, I have over the years since then found other dolls made by the same company that had different faces that looked much less angry than this one. Newborn has, for years, been my best thrift store find ever, even though she was technically grandma's thrift store find. And then I bought some chairs. I can't remember exactly what I paid for the chairs. My daughter had called me up one day and mentioned that she was looking for chairs to go with her kitchen table, which is, you know, the kitchen table with the like three inch thick glass slab on the top and the bentwood base that everybody has. She had picked one of those up at a thrift store and she was looking for chairs to go with it. And the boys and I were at Goodwill and we found these chairs with carved seashell style backs and I I think they're kind of tacky. I'm not a fan, but I thought they might go with her table and they were really cheap. So I sent my daughter a picture. She said, yes, please. And I, there were six of them. I think I paid $15 for the six of them, which would make sense if they were $4.95 and half off. And I think that might have been what I paid for them. It's hard to Tetris six dining room chairs with arms into the back of a Honda Odyssey when you can't lay down all of the seats because you've got teenage boys in the back, but we did it. And we took them to her house and she liked them and she used them for a couple of years and then she moved into her new house and decided that she didn't have a place for them anymore and placed an ad on Craigslist. She placed the ad on Craigslist in the middle of the night and got a lot of responses really fast, so she decided something was up, pulled down the ad, did some research. These are vintage Italian carved grotto chairs, and they are going on eBay for ridiculous, or they are listed on eBay and some other sales sites for ridiculously big money. She relisted them at a price that was more kind of halfway between what she started with and what they're selling for. Actually, far less than halfway because we saw a set like hers that they wanted $2,500 for, and I hope they were in better condition. So, something I do not understand these chairs. But in the end, my daughter got $375 for the six chairs. She's happy. I'm shocked because I would have, she called and asked what I, if I cared what she did with them when she was going to get rid of them. And I assumed she was going to donate them back to Goodwill. I did not think they were worth listing on Craigslist for the 30 bucks she originally had asked. I would not have fought my husband if he tried to throw them in the burn pile, except for the whole not burning furniture thing. I'm glad she figured it out. I am glad that they got to someone who cared enough to drive two hours to come down and get them. If it hadn't been for the pandemic, she might have sat on them a while longer and tried to get more money out of them. But it was a happy ending. And depending on how you define things, maybe the chairs are our best thrift store find. Maybe this baby doll is the best thrift store find. I don't know. I have got a baby doll that I bought, or I didn't buy, my grandma bought it, and as hazy as my memories are, that thing must have been 45 years ago, because it is one of my super early memories, and she bought me the doll, but then she put it in her glass top display table, so I don't know if the doll was for me or for her, because it was always singled out as my doll, but she always had custody over it. And I still have it. I don't have the table at my house right now to take a picture of it. So how do you define your best thrift store find? And these days, I'm honestly happy to go wander through the thrift store and make thrift with me videos and see if there's interesting stuff to see. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. Sometimes I find something that I love enough I have to bring it home with me. And once in a blue moon, there is the thing we will be talking about for years to come. If you've got a great story, please share it in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle. This is my Romantic Tangle, and I'll be back with you with more videos soon.